These are the very people the liberation struggle was meant to help. South Africa. Now they just have each other and broken dreams. They don't know how they will survive. Soon they'll return to their homeland in the Eastern Cape, a thousand kilometres to the south. Not much has changed here since apartheid. Underpaid black labour still powers the mines, and it's mainly the whites who own the industry and take the profits. The only difference is that a tiny black elite have joined the white elite on boards of companies. In the late 1990s, the ANC government struck a deal with business. They would keep labour cheap and stable in return for some black ownership. Many see this arrangement has been at the expense of poor black South Africans, while a few, like Tokyo Sequale, have benefited. The approach there was black economic empowerment to, 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 to let black people advance. I'm one of them, by the way. I went into business for quite uh, some time in mining, in the financial services and so on. Is it the only solution? Certainly not. It is just one way. It is just a way of getting people into the ownership of companies. But that's not what we're trying to do, to get everybody to become a businessman. But it seems to have only benefited for a few at this stage. Naturally, I'll accept that. I'll accept that because the, 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 the approach is, you can't turn everybody into a shareholder in the country. A government which, which is confronted with a lot of difficulties and challenges around education, health, poverty and so on. Uh, these issues have got to be addressed. And, and I think we're getting there, but there are problems, and we must admit, with our, not policy problems, because the policies are in place, but implementation and making sure that people are held accountable to what they're supposed to be doing. In the absence of interim funding, the application for a postponement will be heard on, decided on Monday. And the biggest accountability test for the ANC government is the commission of inquiry into the Marikana mine massacre. The order we make is that the sitting of the commission will be adjourned. So far, the commission which has been sitting for 10 months has been dogged by delays and false starts. It would be a huge disgrace, it would be a huge loss. Um, if the commission, for example, was to stop its work, um, I don't know what will happen. The commission has heard compelling evidence against the police actions. These pictures show how the police planted false evidence to try and justify the killings by placing weapons beside the dead for the official police photos. Photos taken earlier by the media show no weapons present. The widows and their lawyers are seriously concerned that the miners are going to have their legal funding cut by the government. And if that happens, they'll boycott the commission. It's also proving to be dangerous to be a witness at the Marikana Commission. Six miners have been murdered just before they were to take the stand. 
you know, crucial potential witnesses kept on dying. Unfortunately, we cannot, as, as legal people, uh, pin it on, on any of the parties. But it is disturbing, it is disturbing to an extent that one of the, our advocates was also stabbed. And it was somehow uh, suspected that it was linked to the commission itself. There's little faith in the commission. Currently in South Africa, about 9,000 police officers face criminal charges such as rape, corruption and assault. But less than 100 have ever been convicted.